Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining me for the Bomb Lab Phase 6 walkthrough. I'm going to assume that you already have a bomb on a Linux computer that you have access to. So with my bomb, I've already gone ahead and started it in GDB and set breakpoints for explode bomb and phase six. But the first thing that I really want to do is take a look at the code on the whiteboard. We're going to start today by isolating out. There are three calls specifically to explode bomb. We're also going to identify what information we can about our input. So for instance, we're getting our input through the call to read six numbers. They could be any set of numbers like 1, 2, 4, 16, 8, 9, any set of numbers according to this call to read six numbers. We have a variable stored in R13D, which will end up being zero. And then we jump. We're going to jump all the way down to 1905, where we move R12 into RBP. R12 was previously RSP, so we are currently moving the value of the stack, which was an R12, into RBP. So RBP will point to the top of the stack, which is likely to be our input. So the first thing that we can do is test this, because when we go down to the very next instruction, the first object inside of R12 will end up going into EAX. So we're going to check our input first. So when we run, we're going to go ahead and put in all of our input for previous phases. So now that we've gotten to this uh, input for phase six, we'll go ahead and put in our potential stream inputs. So far, all we know is that there are six integers. And now we're in phase six. We can disassemble and set a breakpoint for the instruction where we can test that theory. So we can set a breakpoint for the instruction where we can check if our input ended up inside of the stack. We want to use next i rax is indeed one, which is the first number that we put in. That is good to know. So now let's go back to our whiteboard. We have checked our input. We know that EAX is currently one. R12 does in fact contain our input. So we subtract one from EAX. So EAX becomes zero. Compare five to EAX and jump up above to explode bomb. Fortunately, our number is not higher than five, but now we know we're not going to be able to use 16, 8, 9. So let's go ahead and try this again with different input. So in this run, we'll use new data. We'll use 1, 2, 4, 4, 2, 1. All of those are numbers underneath five. I'm, I'm sure that they will meet that quota. So if we disassemble, we want to verify that that is not going to call the JA instruction. So that means that we will then add one to our 13D and compare six. Okay, so we are going to iterate through all six of our integers. And we're not going to jump if equal this time because we're not at the end of our integers. So instead, we're moving R13D into EBX and jumping to 58EF, where we move EBX into RAX. And it looks like we're using that as an index. So just as a recap, EBX will currently be 1. Now it's going to be 2. And we're comparing. 5 to this EBX, and this would be our way out of this secondary loop. So it looks like for each element in our list of six integers, we're going to look through the rest of them in the list. We are moving the current value into an index, 
And then it looks like we are comparing that value to the current one. So for each element, we're going to be looking at all the ones that come after them and comparing them to EAX and then jumping, if not equal, back to 58E7. So our current input's no good. We're going to explode the bomb here because we repeated numbers. Okay, so just let's confirm that if we go down to um, 58F8. And it looks like we just hit that 58F8. Yes, we did. All right, so now if we look inside of the registers, we see that our AX is two, our BX is one. This is not going to be an effective problem until the fifth time we hit it because that is the next time it will find a repeated number. All right, so we did in fact explode. That's okay, we'll rerun it. All right, so now we want input that is all six or under and doesn't repeat. So let's try straight up one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so we hit our first breakpoint. That's just indicating that we're checking um, to verify that our number is six or under and meets that criteria. Uh, we have gotten to the F8 line where we're comparing to verify that none of these uh, inputs match. So we've made it through the first one. So far so good. Uh, I think that we can clear this breakpoint. But we don't have another one set. So let's go ahead and disassemble and think about where we're going to end up. So how do we get out of this? Let's go back to the whiteboard. So let's see. We will jump if greater than back to 1901. Okay, so that means that we're going on to the next one. We saw that in action. And how do we get out? Uh, well, here's our jump if equal. So jump if equal goes to 1953. And it appears that we are then out of this loop. So then we move zero into ESI. And we will jump to 19.3D. So we are still using ESI as an index into RSP. So it looks like we're still dealing with our data and moving the first element into ECX. So our ECX will end up being one at least for the first one. Uh, and then we have EAX, which is getting set to one. And we've got a very pretty low defective address that's very attractive. We're gonna go take a look at that next. So that means that the next place that we want to go is this low defective address. So where can we find that? It is at five nine four, five. All right. So we want to hit next until we hit that breakpoint, which we just did. And now when we disassemble, let's take a look at that lovely address that is printed out here that happens to have a human readable tag, node one. 
So we are going to go take a look in memory at that. Let's start with just one, but a great value because we don't know exactly what we're going to see. That's very interesting. It looks like perhaps two integers. Let's look at more. We had a total of six values. Let's try assuming six great values. Oh, but so far there are three nodes. Okay, let's double it. Okay, so we found a total of five nodes. It looks like each node contains two integers and an address. And hey, it looks like currently each of those nodes are connected one to the next, and there is not a null pointer in the last one. We have another address to follow up on. There we have node six. All right, so let's take the time to go ahead and write this down and then figure out where to go from here. All right, so currently we have all of the data that was available from GDB that we just saw. Each of the addresses that I wrote down is the node that that node starts at, not the address that it specifically has currently in it. Um, because what I saw was that each of these nodes is connected to each other right now. Node one's connected to node two, two to three, three to four, four to five, five to six. But knowing which address that node starts at could be worth something. So we found out what is in this LEA. And the very first thing that happens after that is a comparison of one to ECX. So it is currently ECX. We are not greater than that. So we're going to jump back, okay. If our number is one, then we're going to 12, 2E, removing RDX, which our DX is currently our data structure. And we are moving the address for node one into RSP plus hexadecimal two zero plus RSI, which is zero, times eight. So that will mean that RSP plus OX two zero in memory is going to point to the address for node one. Okay. So then we increment RSI. So it looks like we are once again iterating through uh, six times and we'll jump to get out of this loop to 19.5a. But what do we do if we are greater than one? So for greater than one, then when this check occurs, we'll go to 1923. So we are looking at the address that's stored inside of node one and moving that into our counter for RDX and incrementing one to EAX. So when the value that we gave it matches EAX, then we will end up moving that value into the stack. Okay, so this will increment and uh, write a total of six values. And it looks like the order is the order in which we tell it to do those nodes. We can work with that. So let's head down further and see if we can come up with a reason for putting these in some kind of an order. So since we can get there without exploding the bomb, we're just gonna move all the way down to line 1994, which will then jump all the way up to 19A4. So 19A4, we'll go down to 19A8. Oh, but then there's a comparison. Comparisons are useful. All right, so at this point, we've figured out that 
we need six numbers. They all have to be six or below. We can't repeat numbers. So let's go ahead and use one, two, three, four, five, six. And then disassemble so that we can set a breakpoint for the instruction that we figured out that we can get to without exploding at this point. So that is 59AC. All right, so we are now there and we can take a look at what's going on. So the comparison operator just went off between EAX and what's stored in RVX. EAX is EA, uh, or the decimal version, 234. And then stored inside of RBX is the very first node address. So when we take a look in there, we find B3. So we just compared EA and B3. So the order of those is important. This is B3 minus EA, um, and then we're looking for less than or equal. So a sign flag is a good thing. For our purposes, it means that our bomb won't explode this time. So now we're there again. Uh, we should look in registers. Okay, now we have 26B in hexadecimal or 619, and we are comparing that to what is stored in 240, which is EA. So we still have the smaller number EA minus 26B, so this should also still result in being able to pass the check. Now we have 1DC, which is 479, and we are looking into RBX at 8250, but that's where the 26B is. Now we're subtracting 26B minus 1DC, so this is predicted to explode which it does. All right, this run has told us everything that it can, but the important thing, those integers matter, and if we can take a look back at our notes, we should be able to formulate a possible solution. So what we saw was that when we were comparing something that was less than or equal to, it worked. So we were fine when we went from B3 to EA, and when we went from EA to 26B, but not when we went from 26B to 1DC. That did not work. So let's see if we can't put these in numerical order. If we did that, we would Instead of moving from EA to 26B, we'd go down to 193, and then 1DC, and then 26B, and then 382. So if we use this ordering, that would give us a new input to test that is 1, 2, 5, 4, 3, 6. So let's try that new input. So I'll just have the one breakpoint set at the end, but if we continue using next, we should be able to do that five times and diffuse the face. All right, thank you for joining me for Bomb Lab Phase 6 walkthrough. I hope to see you again for the secret phase soon.